So where do you think Paul Martin caught the political bug from? Well, he got it from his dad, Paul Martin Sr. Paul Martin served under four Liberal Prime Ministers, although he never actually won the leadership himself. He did lose, though, a couple of times. Once to Lester B. Pearson, and he also lost to Pierre Elliott Trudeau. So Paul, the son, though, first elected in 1988. Two years later, well, he ran for the Liberal leadership against Jean Chrétien, and it was a nasty personal battle, and we all know how that one ended up. 1993, Chrétien was the Prime Minister, and guess who he named as Finance Minister? Paul Martin, and Paul Martin went to work. He wiped out a $42 billion deficit and recorded five straight budget surpluses. Now the Liberals went, oh my goodness, fabulous! The critics said he cut too deep and collected way too much tax money to achieve the surplus. So let's fast forward to 2002. Martin's long-time feud with Chrétien goes crazy and it explodes. He's kicked out of cabinet. By late 2003, Chrétien steps down and Paul Martin elected, well, practically anointed, the new Liberal leader with 93% of the vote. But then, oh, a crushing blow. The sponsorship scandal. In the next election, Paul Martin wins again, but this time a minority. 18 months later, they're out. They lost the 2006 vote to Stephen Harper and the Conservatives shortly after Paul Martin resigned as leader. The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Paul Martin. How are you? How are you? Very well. How are things? They're good. They're all right? They're good, yeah. All right, so what are the qualities of a good Prime Minister? Oh, I think conviction. Um, I think a sense of idealism, and, and a but a very strong belief that that you can make, you can change things. Mm -hmm. Now, when you actually get into office as a prime minister, is is it easier to hang on to that, or because you got to think there's all these pressures that come from the outside to make that difficult? Oh yeah, but I mean the, the pressures are always going to be there, and of course they're they are. But that's why you have to have the strong conviction that this is where you're going to go. And when you actually took office, one of the big things is learning to manage your people and learning to to, to, to compromise. Is that an easy or a difficult thing? To, to wrap your head around when you, when you actually have all these people who report to you? Well, yeah, there's no doubt that, that managing people is an essential part of the job, um, and especially since they are people who were very able and, and there are a lot of egos involved, and so there's no doubt about, uh, about that. Um, compromise depends. Uh, compromise to, you know, without losing the core of what you want to do, um, that works. Compromising and losing the core of what you're trying to do doesn't work at all. Are there a lot of pressures within a party to, 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 to keep a lot of people happy, don't you? Well, sure. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, uh, uh, you know, a, a political party, the Liberal Party, is a coalition of, of all kinds of interests and ideas, and, and, and so, yes, you, and you, you, but that's its great strength. That's what makes democracy work. You know, Churchill said that, that it's a pretty messy thing, that, and, and Churchill was absolutely right. Mm -hmm. But, as he also said, it's the best form. Now, when you started uh, your career in politics, uh, you, did you have an idea of what it would be like to be the Prime Minister? And when you were in there, what was the biggest difference? Uh, I had a bit of an idea what it was like to be in government. Yeah. I don't think you know what it's like to be a prime minister until you're a prime minister. I think that you. I think it's everybody learns on the learns on the job, even if they've been a minister, as I had been. When you're in office, um, are you aware of what a legacy will, your legacy will be? Um, I don't. Uh, you don't really think about it. Uh, and in fact, I think that if you've been a successful politician, you you wait for the historians and let the historians judge. You, Essentially, what politics is all about is dealing with today's problems, but it really is anticipating tomorrow's. Mm -hmm. And if you've anticipated them, then the only people who are going to be able to judge that are the historians. But when people present ideas on your desk and you're reading them, you know, I mean, there's got to be a part of you that says, Ooh, you know, like go, going into war, decisions to go in, decisions not to go into, to the constitutional issues. There's all these things where you look at it and go, man, they're going to remember me for this if this works or doesn't work. Do, do those thoughts pop into your head when you're having those? No, they, that occurs later. <laughs> After you sign? <laughs> yeah, no, what you're doing, you look at this and you sort of say, this is the right thing to do, this is what I'm going to do, and then you, you do it. Uh, and, uh, but I suppose later on you begin to say, well, how are they going to judge this, how are they going to judge that? When you, when, you, uh, when you got out of federal politics, how much different was it from when you got in? Um, oh, I, I think that it's, uh, it's gotten meaner. Uh, than it was, and I hope it goes back. I think that's one of the reasons that people are sort of turned off. Mm -hmm. I don't think people like to see people shouting at each other, and I don't think they like to see all the innuendo. I think they want to see their politicians dealing with the issues that, that concern them. You know, the audience, if you see the, the, the contestants to be this next great prime minister, you look at the age group that they are in, and they are part of this next generation, who maybe in 10, 15, 20 years will be the prime minister, you know, of this country. But yeah. there is a, a certain a generation that haven't been as engaged. Is that a big part? When, when you were in there, are, you, are, are politicians trying to get young people to vote? Oh, yeah, yeah, very much. Um, and I think what it comes down to is you want, you have to challenge young people. 
young people want to be challenged and they want to be listened to and they don't want you to treat them just sort of as, as somebody to go help you in an election campaign. They, they say, I'm coming in, I want to be listened to. Um, and if you do that, then I think the young people will come. And I, I really think there's a cycle here. I think we're going to start to see um, a generational shift. I think we're going to start to see a lot more young people coming, coming into public life. Because fundamentally, they're going to go where they can make a difference. Mm -hmm. When you actually become the prime minister, do they have access to the office? Is it, do you get to hear a lot of the opinions of the, of the people who are there? Uh, certainly okay. that younger group? Oh, sure. Uh, well, you do if you reach out to them. And if you're smart, that's what you'll do. You will reach out. Um, and you will spend a fair amount of time doing that. Uh, now, you can't do it as much as you want. You can't do it as much as people expect. Uh, but if you don't do it, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. What's your one piece of advice to these kids as they, as they try to be the PM? Just stay true to your beliefs. Cool. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks.